Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm Gus and 2020 has been a very interesting year for IEMs. We've looked at a bunch of budget options that deliver a ton of value and that are really interesting. Stuff that I love, some stuff that I like, some stuff that I understand that the sound signature isn't for me personally, but still does deliver a lot of value and it's still really interesting. And these are the TRN STM. They are a pair of IEMs that it's not too unassuming, doesn't look like they're extremely impressive stuff, but they do that while also having a trick up their sleeve. Because this little IEM can turn itself into three different headphones. And we're gonna talk about how they do that, but let's just keep on track, okay? Because first, it's always price, because budget. These are still a budget IEM. MSRP is actually closer to 35, so between 32 to 35 dollars. But right now, and rather consistently, you can grab them from between 20 to 25 dollars. And the, for that price and the overall quality of the package, they really do deliver quite a lot of value. Now, in terms of build, you guys can see that it's nothing super fancy. This metal plate to the outside does lend itself for the overall look and feel to not be super cheap looking and it does add a little bit of a heft to it. The texture is also nice, uh, but the overall translucent plastic stuff actually reminds me of the Zeus, which is a $700 pair of IEMs. And I mean, the actual plastic case, it's definitely not what's differentiating one from the other. So overall built, you really can't complain. Feel solid, doesn't feel flimsy or cheap at all. So I wouldn't worry about that. And it comes with a pretty nice cable in the box. Now, no, these are not the stock cables. These are actually a custom special cable from KB Ear that this cable is absolute bliss. I would definitely say that if you want to upgrade for a cable, this is probably one of the nicest ones I have ever seen. So yeah, thanks a lot for sending these over as well because the stock cables do get a thumbs up, but these things, holy crap, these are awesome. And inside you'll find two drivers, that's it. A dual magnet dynamic and a balanced armature. And it does everything that you need. And in terms of power, you can drive these with anything. And for those of you who still think that if you need to use a dongle like that little Apple dongle for lightning to 3.5 millimeter, you're going to have difficulty driving your IEMs. Some headphones, like more demanding headphones, might actually have a bit of a difficult time and you need like, hard to drive headphones to actually have a problem with those adapters specifically, but IEMs, 99.9% .9 of them, you are going to be able to run like pretty respectably. And when I say respectably, I mean that you can run them past where you should be listening to music, not to damage your own hearing. So don't sweat it. And these REMs are not surprisingly very easy to drive as well. Now, enough about everything else. Let's jump into the sound because I know that's what you guys are waiting to hear. How does this thing sound and how does it actually perform as three different headphones? Well, first off, we're not talking about exchanging tips. Using either silicone or foam tips will change the way your IM sound a little bit, but not necessarily sounding like completely different headphones, well, maybe depending on the tips and the IMs, but it's not that. The trick up the sleeve the STM brings are these little guys, because this part of the stem is actually a screw-in. So these different nozzles that come in the box change the way that you tune the sound of the IEMs themselves, which is the equivalent of a couple of headphones that not only allow you to exchange the pads, which is one of the most common mods, if not the most common mod people do to headphones, but also to exchange and change the different materials between the driver and your ears within the cups. Since you don't have that much space to, you know, swap things in and out in that particular sense in IEMs, the STM just made the entire tip swappable. And the three different ones that you get are the gold one, the blue, and the red. And while the gold is supposed to deliver a balanced sound signature, the blue one is supposed to deliver a more present travel region with much more detail, and the red one is supposed to bring in the bass, that rumbling low end. But before we talk about how these different nozzles actually change the sound of the IEMs, it's important that you guys understand two things. One, I'm about to say that the baseline of the audio from these IEMs, it's got quite a bit of quality overall. It doesn't have the most astounding level of detail you'll ever hear, but it does have quite a bit of detail. It has somewhat 
of a soundstage. It's not extremely like center focused, like pinpoint in the middle of your forehead. It has a little bit of room to breathe within your head, but with a little bit of room to breathe. So not too claustrophobic. Imaging is nice, not necessarily verticality in forwards or backwards, but from left to right, right to left does a fairly good job at that. And the overall tonality is mellow. It's quite relaxed. It's the, the overall sound signature is quite relaxed. I would say that it's akin to the Tin T2 sound signature with a couple of differences. And the second thing is that when you don't use any of the nozzles, the sound is really weird. It's actually terrible. So when I say all those things about what the baseline sounds, I don't mean the baseline without any of the nozzles. It's just those characteristics are overall present all the time, if you know what I mean. It may sound a little bit weird, but you guys are gonna get what I'm saying. Now, as for the nozzles, what actually happens? When you use the gold one, instead of delivering a balanced sound signature, what it does is actually flatten everything. So it flattens it to the point where I don't really find it enjoyable to listen to music with the gold nozzles, but it's not like, it's not unpleasant. It's just not enjoyable. It's not a fun way to experience sound. It is flat enough that I would say that while in a pinch and on a budget, you could even master with these, really. It's not gonna be the most precise monitoring pair of IEMs ever, but they can do the job. Now the blue nozzle was supposed to bring up extra detail and more presence in the treble, right? And it kind of does that, but somewhat to a fault because it doesn't really add that much detail, if at all. So I do think that sometimes it can even be sort of a placebo effect. And that's a fault of my capacity to actually perceive those differences. But if I'm having such a hard time, you know, distinguishing one thing from the other, maybe it doesn't really mess with the detail at all. But the other point about having more presence in the treble, it does that. It actually does. It brings out more of the treble and it just it bumps up how much treble is being brought forth. The problem is it does that to the detriment of actually diminishing what you have in the low end area, which means that you gain extra present in the vocal range and you lose body to the entire sound signature because the low end is diminished way too much. And this is a sound signature that to me is not only not fun to listen to, is actually not pleasant. I don't enjoy it at all. But I do understand that in some situations, this may actually even be an advantage. For gamers, for example, competitive ones that have absolutely no space in their life for low end in their games, the blue nozzle might actually be ideal because you're going to have much more presence in the treble region, more highs and a bit more mids and not at all, and actually less of the, uh, of the low end. But personally, even in competitive settings, I rather have a little bit of low end at least so that the overall experience is, you know, more immersive, but that's just me. And the last one, which is the red, that was supposed to bring in, bring home the bass, the rumbling low end. And it, got, eh. it does bring a little more low end. That balanced sound signature, that underlying bass line of quality that I talked about before, it kind of lives in the red nozzle as if to say, hmm, so what if I get that sound signature from the T2, add a little bit of extra bass, not as much, and you know, mash them up together and make an IM. Well, that's the STM in a really short way of putting it, but it's basically it. It doesn't have as much quantity or quality of bass as the blondes. It doesn't have as much quality of the overall sound signature as the T2s, but it is as relaxed with a very relatable tonality to one another. And it sounds very close to what the T2 brings to the table. If I didn't have the blondes or the T2s anymore and I had to just, you know, make do with the SDM, I would actually be pretty happy because it is quite competent at everything that it does. As it stands, I honestly wouldn't pass this up as an opportunity or a solution for someone who doesn't want to spend as much as the T2 asks for, because this is cheaper, and you don't want to forego completely that sound signature and go for the blondes because of the extra low end, but you don't have everything else that t T2s bring to the table, this is your guy, with the red nozzle specifically, but this is your guy. So if you want a single IM that kind of mashes the best of both of those two specific worlds at an even lower budget, I should say, this is a very good option, like a very good option.
And that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, so like, subscribe, hit the bell, share, comment, and do all that sort of stuff. It really helps us out a lot, and I appreciate you. Thanks a lot for watching. This is Gus, and I'll catch you guys later. <laughs>